here today to do a book review. I'm going to be talking about this book, Rayuela, by Julio Cortázar, which in English is titled Hopscotch. And I'm going to stay with the Spanish title because it's so much easier for me to pronounce than Hopscotch. So first I'm going to try and do a summary of the plot in this book. Although I must say that this is not a plot-driven book. It's more about the structure of the book and the ideas of the characters and their character development. The main characters in this book are Horacio Oliveira and La Mala, which is like his lover. The book is divided in three parts. Uh, the first one takes place in Paris, the second one takes place in Argentina, and the third one is like a mixture of musings and other tests and random pieces of the plot. The first part, that is, well, they are in Paris, focuses in Oliveira and Lamaga's relationship and also on their group of friends, which are called El Club de la Serpiente, which I guess they will have translated as the Snakes Club. The second part is when Oliveira travels alone with Lamaga to Argentina and he meets with some of his old friends from his youth and no spoilers, they just, they are there. <laughs> That's basically the plot, there's no more to it, it's just the relationship between Oliveira and Lamaga and their friends. What would be the themes treating this book? Well, there's a lot of themes in here. Uh, Oliveira is trying to find the meaning of his life, what is the purpose, why we are he well, why he is here, more than anything, and what he has to do with his life. Some other themes are friendship, and love, and human relationships. Uh, there's also some topics about probably the intellectual world and people who are maybe too smart for their own good. Rayuela is a Spanish language classic. It's a book that I taught in high school, it's a book that people learn about and is very important inside our literature. It's a novel from the 60s and it's kind of experimental and modern and new and it basically plays around the idea of how you should read a book. Cortázar was very into what he called active readers instead of the traditional passive reader. He considered that traditional readers were passive towards the book. They read the story in the order the author had laid out and barely interacted with it. So with his novel, Rayuela, he tried to make the, uh, the reader more active and maybe kind of like a co-author in the sense that he should pick up the story and be actively involved in the way the story is told and what they read. So in order to do this, Cortázar devised this novel that can be read in any order you want. It can be read like an, any traditional book from cover to cover, straight plot from chapter one to last chapter which is uh, 155. It can be read till the middle point just the first two parts without the third part that I say it's like random musings and random plot are, uh, elements and stuff. So you can read it from chapter 1 to chapter 56 and stop there. Or you can read it according to the table of instruction provided in the first page of the book. But I don't know if you can see, there's a bunch of chapters here in a random order. So you can follow this order that is the one that Cortázar is giving you. But you can also, as I say, read in whatever order you want. It's meant to be playful, and so the title is meant to be jump from chapter to chapter, like you jump in a hopscotch. It's kind of like a children's game. Doing this, Cortázar hoped that the readers would become active readers, more involved with what is being told in the novel. So maybe and me, I decided to read it first in the chronological order from chapter 1 to chapter 56 and stop, and then pick it up again and follow the table of instruction. So, not a good idea, <laughs> let me tell you. I wouldn't advise that you read this book twice back to back because it just becomes too much. It's like, no, <laughs> don't do that. Like, if you're interested in picking up, please do it, please read it, please choose whatever order you want to read it, but don't do both back to back. Like, the book, I think that overall is worth it, it's worth to read. But if you read it like, like a did, it just takes away some of the enjoyment, I think, because you get too tired of everything, of the good things and of the bullshit that there is in here. Some critics have re referred to Rayuela as the anti-novel, 
meaning that it destroys what is traditional to be considered a novel, which is a linear narrative from one from start to end. But Cartagena himself preferred to call it contra novel instead of anti novel because he thought he wasn't trying to like get rid of the genre or destroy it completely, just take a different view on it. Given that this book is actually very new, innovative, and revolutionary in its field and genre, it's normal that there's a kind of cult around it. Some people love it, maybe even too much for their own good. Because uh, I had some mixed feelings and misconceptions, I think, about this book. So I read quite a bit around online, and honestly, some people can be quite pedantic about it. Like, even in the Wikipedia page, like when I was trying to summarize the plot, so I started reading the summary in Wikipedia to get some ideas. Uh, there was this quote that I'm going to read in Spanish and I will put the translation in English. It says, Contar el argumento de Rayuela de una manera lineal es, con toda seguridad, un reduccionismo que aleja al lector del sentido de la obra, pues excluye el vasto universo psicológico de los personajes y las complejas relaciones de estos con temas como el amor, la muerte, los celos y el arte, entre algunos. Okay? Anyway, so uh, this is already for me a very conflicting book because honestly, like, not only the people who like it are sometimes very pedantic, the book itself is sometimes very pedantic, and I can't, I cannot tell if it's serious or is it just irony, because at some points it feels like, you know, because it's the 60s, so I don't, if, if, if this was green in the modern day, I will be so sure this is full irony and sarcasm about the intellectual war. But I don't know at the time, and I couldn't find any place online that clear my mind in that respect, so if you have any opinions or know of any critic that has been that has been made about this, leave me a comment, because I would love to read it. That leads me to my point, this, this book has issues, it has a lot of issues. The first one is like, oh, so edgy. Like, I, I, I get that it's the time and it's the literature of the years it was written on, but some of the topics and, and the way they talk and how it was presented is so, so edgy and like, the, for example, all the characters are so weird it's like, weird, unlikable characters that don't, like, I couldn't connect with them the person that I could connect the most, it was La Maga and she's kind of like presented at some points like uh, a stupid woman who doesn't know anything so we laugh about her which leads me to the next point this book is fairly sexist and again I get that it's the times but even Cortázar himself in later years recognized that he made some mistakes and one of the huge like the biggest mistakes he made and that really made me very angry and I had to stop reading because as I say he was very interested in the dynamic between passive reader and active reader but in the book, he doesn't call them active reader and passive reader. He calls them lector hembra and lector cómplice. Lector hembra, I don't know how it was translated into English because I was speaking about this with one of my friends who is a native English speaker and I was trying to convey how horrible it sounds in Spanish because although I will translate as female reader, hembra doesn't, doesn't, it's not equivalent to female. Embrace the term in Spanish is usually applied to animals, to female animals, but when you apply it to a person, it has a derogative meaning. It will be probably better translated as bitch readers. I don't know, it's, it's very offensive in my opinion. And I know I'm not crazy because I know that Cortázar later apologized about this, and there's a piece of interview where he said, and I quote, Me equivoqué. Pertenezco a una generación muy machista y cuando dije eso respondí a un código cultural reaccionario y atrasado. Pero sabes muy bien que me he corregido y soy un hombre nuevo, es decir, medio mujer. Which he said is a thing in the 80s, but even so, it just threw me out of what he was trying to say in the part where he talks about being a passive reader versus an active reader. And another of the problems I have with this book is that it's one of those books that much of the enjoyment relies on you knowing the references, which isn't exactly a bad thing. Sometimes books that rely on reference can be quite enjoyable to read, but the problem with this one is that it relies way too much. Like, 
is so full of obscure references and obscure cultural meanings. Like, the second time I read it, I would try to I say, like, okay, I'm gonna underline everything that I don't know and look it up in the internet. And I only did like 20 pages of the book because it was just too much. Every page had like five people or paintings or books or Latin stuff that I didn't know anything about and I got so tired. And I think that if your book has to rely so much on the references and stuff, maybe like you dated so much. It's so dated to the time because some of these references are very well known today because they are classics from before or they are stuff from the 60s and 50s that became a classic. But some of it is just so centered in the moment, things that were popular there and then and are not popular anymore. And even so, sometimes it felt so... For example, this book talks a lot about jazz, which is great. I mean, it's part of the mood of the book. It's, part of, it's one of the reasons that people love it so much. But when it talks about jazz, it doesn't just talk about jazz, it has to mention every single singer, trumpetist, drummer that appears in the album and the song they are playing and whatever year it was played. And is that really necessary? Or is it necessary to always refer to Louis Armstrong as Satsmo? Because I didn't get it the first time and I don't know, you could like, I don't know. So overall, what was my reading experience of this book? As I tell in the beginning, I read it twice back to back, which wasn't very nice. But I still enjoy it in some respects. Of course, I had many issues and there were several problems that I had with this book that I've talked about in this video. But in the end, Cortázar is a great writer. He writes very smart, he writes very funny sometimes, he has some great sense of irony and, and time, comedic timing and I really really enjoy it. So I gave it three stars but I'm very open to read more about Cortázar, especially his short story collections because I think his style of his writing style would translate very well into that. And also I admire his very creative mind, like some of the experimental narration techniques he does here were so 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 interesting. Mm -hmm. And I would love to see what he comes up with for short stories, like, yeah. If after this review, or even from before, you want to pick up this book because you are quite curious about it, I have a couple of recommendations to do. If you're going to pick it up in Spanish, I would recommend you pick up the Catedra edition. This is a, this very ugly black cover, but from what I have heard, it has a great, great annotations which my edition doesn't have any kind of annotation. So I think probably if you read one that's annotated and that tells you all the secure references that he's making, what they are, your reading experience will be much nicer. As for the English edition, if you wanna, if you wanna read Rayuela in English, I have no idea because I haven't read them and I don't have access to anyone to check out what I think of the translation. But Cortázar himself, congratulated Gregory Rabasta for his translation. So that seems quite, quite a recommendation from the author himself. So probably check out that one out if you want to read in English and yeah, good luck with it and I hope you enjoy it and get something away from it. Anyway, it was very nice to see you all and I hope you really like this video and I hope to see you again in another video and that you have a nice day. Bye!